the oven axe, it's just way too slow to get a value out of. Absolutely atrocious in bosses. You need to do a lot of damage to make it worth its time. And currently, it's just not worth it. Right now, way too slow. I can't believe you've done this. What's going on guys? This is Psyche, and we are finally back. After what's been like, what, three weeks? I've been just working off camera, doing other stuff. That being said, I am definitely not taking a break from YouTube. I've just been working on my other channel, as you guys may have heard already. But today, we're going to take a look at a highly requested weapon. Now, despite what you saw in my previous tier list, I believe it was 2.4, I said the oven axe was hot garbage. Well, some of you have been saying, Psyche, you should try this weapon out again. I swear, it's good. You are the one that's sleeping on it. So I thought, sure, let's do that. Now, I originally thought if this suggestion didn't come in, I probably would have never tried out this weapon again. And I would have probably just settled on the fact that it was pretty bad. But I was really surprised after this run. And I guess I'll just let the gameplay speak for itself. Yes, you are going to see me get hit a couple times here and there. And I swear this might just be a skill issue. For what it's worth, Binding of Isaac fans just really love saying that. So off camera, I haven't been taking too much of a break. On the contrary, I've actually been working more than usual. Because I've been working on four videos that's going to air on my second channel. By this point, the third one would have aired already. But it's something I've always wanted to do for the past couple months. I believe I've stated this in a video that I talked about just right before January. But yeah, that second channel is going to be primarily based on anime-related content. In the form of like analysis or video essay types of content. Now you might be wondering, sure, it's just video essays, right? Surely they can't take that much time out of this YouTube channel. Well, I could not have been more wrong. As it turns out, you also have to write scripts for video essays, including getting the footage necessary, and also find all the necessary precautions that to show footage from TV shows and anime, but without getting copyrighted. That is like extremely difficult. So to put it into perspective, this is probably what a typical Dead Cells run video looks like. You know, we just have like four or five parts of the original run. I cut that up into small pieces, add some effects here and there, and then call it a day. I can probably pump these out like once a day if I really, really wanted to. And you look at this and it's not overwhelming at all. I mean, I'm not even following a script right now, since this is really just the way for me to test my speaking skills. But if we head over to Richie's World, which is my second channel, you'll see that every single one of the four videos that I made all have like many, many files that I have to go through in order to put them in the video. And on top of that, I have to write scripts for all of them. For example, in this case, my script for the fourth video is like five pages long, single spaced. And here I thought I wouldn't be writing any more essays for school. Now, obviously I couldn't air them on this channel because this channel is something completely different. And I always appreciate the people that came over there and gave me some support. If you haven't seen any of the content yet, I actually did one on Gacha Games. I debated about airing that on this channel, but I was like, you know, most people that play games are not going to play Gacha Games, but everyone that watch anime will play Gacha Games. It's just like this unspoken rule. So if you ever wanted to see my opinion on certain Gacha Games, I'll leave the link in the description. All right, we're going into the first curse chest. Um, I actually recorded this run in like mid-February, so I actually do not remember a thing that happened in this run. So this run right now, for me, it's going to look as new as to you guys. But just from the first two biomes in terms of performance, I think it was okay. But as you can see, I did lose out on a lot of health, so I did have to end up taking alienation to get it back. And the thing is though, I could have just easily restarted the run right then and there. But I just chose not to because I think it's way more fun if you just let things play out and just adapt to your situations. Yes, it was the second biome in the game when you have taken a lot of damage back then. I know some people would have probably just restarted. 
But trust me when I say this, you never know what's going to happen in the rest of your runs. You know, just because you take damage in one biome doesn't mean you'll do the same in another. Who knows, maybe you'll just flawless the entire prison depths. Now, I go back and forth on survival builds. I originally only thought that a couple of them were good, and obviously I just kinda gave up on the rest of the survival weapons, mainly because I don't quite like the type of gameplay that it offers, but I think they have great potential. So in this case, when the oven axe cleaves around the enemies, it actually has a pretty long window where you can keep the crits going, and I do believe this was buffed. I am not sure if they ever buffed the damage, though it does feel like it. I'm not sure if it's possible, I know that a lot of the criticism that comes from survival weapons come from the fact that there is a boss damage cap. I'm wondering if it's possible if you just made it so that one swing of the oven axe did like two simultaneous instances of damage at the same time. So this is kind of a way to avoid it. Though again, you will probably have to rebalance the entire game around it, which might be pretty hard to do. It's hard to believe that three weeks have gone past, and I believe the last time I uploaded, I was talking about the bank. It is now in beta, I'm not sure if it's going to be released anytime soon, though I'm assuming it's going to come out very soon. I don't know, after playing Dead Cells for the past years for technically a job, I think it's always nice to shake things up once in a while. Um, I'm still too poor for Elden Ring, unfortunately. For some reason, someone decided that it's a good idea to sell games for $80 in Canada. Except, when you include the tax, it's more like $90. Now, that goes without saying, this video is also kind of a showcase on the Scavenge Bombard, because I don't believe I've ever covered it in a video yet. So, I thought, you know, might as well, right? And I think that the Scavenge Bombard does a really good job of stunning enemies. Same goes for the Crusher, and I think that, along with the Crusher, is going to play a major role in making this build work. So at this point, I thought there was no way I was actually going to make it this far into the run. Um, I've always been pretty skeptical about Oven Axe. If you've been here for a while, if you've been tuning into the channel, you'll know that, for me, slow survival weapons have always had a bad rep. But that is not to say that they are not bad. Um, obviously, I'm not God. Anything I say is not objective. If you disagree with me on anything, that is totally fine. Including something as opinionated as tier lists. So hopefully, now that I have my plans ready for the second channel, I have four videos uploaded. I'm going to start funneling more effort into this channel now, for sure. After been running for over a year, I'm not sure if you guys have been grown tired of Dead Cells just yet. I think there's definitely still more to go. If they keep updating the game, then I'll keep playing it. Now, right now, I guess I'll give my two takes about the works of Motion Twin and Evil Empire and their future pertaining to this game. I think they definitely got the right ideas, you know, adding more content into it. But honestly, if I were to be completely truthful, I would have preferred if they funneled more effort into making the existing weapons work better. Because even though we got a lot of buffs in, I believe it was version 2.4, I think there can still be more changes that can be made. For example, they never addressed that there will be lore rooms in the shipwreck level. Uh, I feel like it's just been missing. And obviously, it's unsure whether or not they will introduce more endings into the game. That's definitely a possibility. But long story short, I've not grown tired of Dead Cells yet. In terms of roguelikes, I think it's one of the best I've played. And I'm really surprised to see that there hasn't been a lot of new roguelikes that have come up over the last year. The last major one that I can think of is probably Hades. It was said that Motion Twin is working on a brand new game, so maybe if it's Dead Cells 2, if it is, then I'll definitely play it. So we're gonna come up on the first curse chest. So this is also something that I don't talk about very often on the channel. Last time I covered it was in a tutorial I made about affixes. But one guide idea I was interested in is something that goes along the lines of how to min-max your damage. So that might be something that can be related to your scroll count, that can be related to the affixes that you get. Because honestly, when I first started this channel, I did not realize I was going to get to this point. Because every single guide I made, like if you go back and look at my first 20 videos, all of those videos were unscripted, including the guides, which you would think will be really important because you don't want to convey wrong information. So that might be something I'm looking into until the bank update comes out, of course. I mean, what would you guys want to see in the future of Dead Cells? I think if it were up to me, I will probably fix the Scarecrow fight, make it slightly less unfair, because I feel like there's just no time where you can rest for even a second. 
Since the Scarecrow was basically sticking to you like glue, it's basically got aimbot. Like, if you stand still for one millisecond, your health bar is gone. And there's still some bugs with the watering can. You know, hopefully that gets fixed, because I think this is what I mean when I say that the game should focus on refining what it has to offer already instead of just keep giving us new content. Like, as much as I appreciate the bank, as much as I appreciate the new items, weapons, mutations, as well as the new soundtrack, don't forget about that, I would really like it if I could go to the Scarecrow more often in my runs. But with how things turned out, it's just not going to be the case. Like, the problem is content is there, but I just have a really hard time accessing it. So this is something that I think the game can definitely improve on. Um, but anyways, we're heading into the Mama Tick fight. So this was going to be a test of whether or not the Scavenge Bombard is actually good. So the game plan for this point is to use the stun lock from the cannon to basically stun Mama Tick in place, and then I can just continuously swing at her with the oven axe. Now this is kind of true, but as you can see the stun on the scavenge bombard is not completely consistent. It's not like the same as crusher. So I think that's something that can be improved. But in terms of damage, it's really good. Because one advantage this has over the crusher is that it will never die. The crusher has a limit of three uses, after that it is gone. But as long as the cannon stays on the field, it will continuously stun enemies. And yeah, sure, you do have to play around it in the sense that it doesn't always stun enemies and you kinda have to always be on the lookout. And because of that, it did lead me to some really unfortunate hits in the Mama Tick fight. But I mean, it was a first experience for me as well. This was actually way before I made the Queen of the Sea tier list. So here we're gonna run into some problems with highly mobile enemies. In this case, this Clockwork Knight, I think that's what it's called, just kind of moves around the screen, really makes it hard for you to hone in and actually get your hits in because the Omanax, it has way too big of a delay. Sometimes you just can't really expect everything to work out. So we're heading into the graveyard now. So this is what I would consider to be like the grace period of the run. Um, really depends on which of the biomes you go to. You go to Slumbering Sanctuary and it's gonna be a lot more chaotic than this. But I think for Graveyard, it's the perfect balance of difficulty. I know I've said this in the past, but yeah, I just really like Graveyard as a biome. Now, that being said, you guys might be wondering which path am I going to? Am I going to fight the Queen or am I just gonna go to Collector? Well, since the Oven Axe doesn't perform too well in the Lighthouse fight and the Queen, you need a lot of support, and I'm sure there is a way to just brute force it. And you know, the fights are probably going to take like 5 minutes, and you could probably do it, but I just chose to go to the fight that gave me the highest percentage chance of winning. So unfortunately, no Queen in the Sea this time around, but I'm sure Collector will be pleased to see us after a long absence. So at this point, I was just looking for a Crusher. I mean, sure, yeah, the Scavenge Bomber has been a pretty swell weapon, but I'm just gonna need something that gives me a bit more firepower. I sometimes even see Crusher as like a cheese item, and if you look at it a certain way, it definitely is. But really, only like a select few weapons in the game can really take advantage of it. And if we're talking about the Oven Axe, I think long sustained damage is what it does really well. Like, assuming that the enemy does not attack you at all, it just stays there like a dummy, then you can get in so much damage if you get the crits going. Because as much as I hate to admit it right now, I am actually having fun. This is definitely a very different experience, a very different type of gameplay than I'm usually used to. And I mean, I am gonna play a little cautiously here because I am cursed. Just like that, we're just gonna lift it. I'm gonna be greedy, I'm gonna go to the biome with the most amount of scroll fragments and the best quality items. Though later on, I'm going to regret this decision a little bit, and you'll see why. And really, Cavern is also kind of a DPS check in the sense that it's a good way to measure whether or not your weapon's like an exceptional one. Because in this case, I'm trying to one-hit the birds as well as the ground shakers. And if it can do that, then Oven Axe can feel really satisfying to use. I'm sure everyone's used to the feeling of where you just one-tap enemies. You click one button, enemies gone. Really satisfying, really simplistic. And here, this is where I'm gonna showcase my hatred of the birds. They just keep slamming at you, and since I'm using Oven Axe, there's really nothing I can do. The game plan right now is to keep the chain of the Oven Axe going for as long as possible, so I can one-shot the enemies via the crits. 
Another mutation that I picked up here is Berserker. Now, I have seen some people arguing with me with this one, but trust me, Berserker is one of the best survival mutations in the game if you are running a melee build. The damage reduction may not seem like much, but when you get into like the late game, where without any type of damage reduction, you're taking a lot of damage still. But with Berserker, you only get hit for like a quarter of the damage that you're supposed to take, which is pretty huge. Especially with a weapon with such a margin for error like the Oven Axe, it's basically a perfect fit. So I don't think it's completely fair to say that survival as an entire color identity is bad. You really have to look for the right combinations. And really, I hope that the trend of them making slower and slower weapons does not continue. If the weapons they churn out is slow, then I hope they're interesting at least. So this is going to be the trouble I was mentioning earlier. I'm going to fight the giant, but as you can see with the oven axe, your character kind of moves forward slightly whenever you swing it. So this can be a problem, and especially with the fists, because there's no air time, it's really hard for me to even get the eyeball to show up. So as you can see, even though the oven axe does do a fair amount of damage, it's not really able to show that in this case. Um, but I just really didn't want to go to distillery. You guys know how much I hate that biome. And the queen route is obviously out of the question as well. So I'm going to be greedy here. And yes, this is going to be a pretty long fight. It is going to be tougher than usual. I'm going to take a bit more damage than what I'm used to. But if you ask anyone in the community that have played this game for a while, you'll know they will always say that Giant is probably one of the easiest bosses in the game, as long as you get used to its moves. And speaking of which, it looks like they still haven't fixed the attack where the Giant is supposed to rain down crystals from above, but I guess that still hasn't been fixed yet, so... Get your free wins here while you can, I guess. What can I say? Giant just has a skill issue, right? Because as soon as I saw the Giant hitting me for so much damage, I was like, yeah, surely this is not gonna be an easy fight. But then I saw that the giant forgot his crystals, and then I thought, yeah, okay, never mind, this fight is pretty easy. And also, fighting this giant reminds me that I probably should make a guide on how to defeat the bosses from the Queen of the Sea DLC. I just haven't gotten around to doing that yet. I don't even know if I'll do one in the first place. So anyways, we're gonna do what most players do and skip Hypey Castle. Um, Hand of the King is kind of a different story. This fight is actually shorter than the giant fight, and this is mainly because the hand is on the ground. I know, such a shocking revelation. But I'm gonna take advantage of the Rampart Shield here, and I know you guys have been wanting to see some slight variation in the gameplay. So with the Triple Slash, what I'm doing is that I'm just gonna parry the first two, and with the third one, I'm just gonna use the shield from the Rampart, to basically ignore it and try to get one more attack in with the Oven Axe, because time efficiency in bosses counts for a lot of the outcome. Like, if you're not efficient with your attacks, you can spend a really long, unnecessary time in these arenas. And this is usually what leads to the player losing a War of Attrition. So that's also something I can talk about in the guide where I teach everyone how to min-max damage. Anyways, we're gonna be done with the Hand of the King's minions. He comes back one more time. Um, the cannon is doing really well, as you can see, and I think one thing that it does better than other turrets is that it has really high health. Um, if you look at a lot of other turrets, like, I don't know, Sinew Slicer or something, one attack from the Hand of the King is probably enough to destroy the turrets, but I don't think that's the case with the cannon. Obviously, it does fit into the theme in the sense that it is like a much bigger turret than the other ones. So here I'm going into the Astrolab, but I didn't want to show off way too much footage because it's really just more or less the same thing. I am going to show the footage of me getting hit because, hey, I am not a perfect player by any means. I still take damage myself. And no, I'm not blaming it on the Oven Axe, okay? So I'm gonna skip a lot of the portions here, especially the tower area. I think you guys know the gist of that puzzle thing already. You just jump up when the lasers are not firing, and then it's pretty much a straight shot from there. So the summary of the outcome of the Astrolab is that I took some damage, but it's okay because there is a food shop here. I can't say the same about the shipwreck. So I definitely think the Queen Route is actually harder in some cases. So I'm gonna take the food and I'm just gonna go into the collector fight. So this is where things starts to really heat up. 
This is the final boss of the game, so you would think that it is the hardest of them all. But actually, thanks to Crusher, and I think the Scavenge Bombard here, we're gonna see something really unexpected. So, hope you guys are ready, and hope you enjoy this fight. I thought this day would never come. Me fighting the Collector with the Oven Axe? The Psyche in 2021 would have never done this. I can guarantee you guys that. So, I was a little bit skeptical because I think thanks to the Crusher as well as the Scavenge Bombard, it is able to actually stun lock the Collector. So, this is what I'm talking about when I say the Oven Axe has really good sustained damage. With the help of the Rampart Shield, I'm just gonna try to stun lock Collector. I'm gonna try to do some hits in advance before he even does anything, before the Invincibility Shield wears off. Because if you can manage to get the crits going from the Oven Axe, the damage is pretty insane, as I have just learned from this one run. Because while it doesn't look like it might be doing much damage with each individual swing, if you couple that with the fact that Crusher stunlocks bosses, and it's just able to keep dishing out continuous damage, then the potential of Oven Axe basically goes through the roof. If only I could do this to like the Giant or Hand of the King, it would have made those fights much easier, but honestly, at this point I'm not really complaining too much. And look at that, third heal without a teleport to the spinning ballroom. That is like a new record right there. That's how you know a weapon is going to be good. Because I could not believe what I was seeing right now. So anyways, this is the final stretch of the game, and again, you would think that this is the final portion where everything is going to be really difficult, but as you can see, there is the Panacea right there. Um, the Collector is going to do some goofy stuff, he's going to fire the Meteors into the walls. You really got to watch out for that because sometimes the Meteors actually end up hitting you, so it's not completely consistent. Um, he's going to do the annoying lasers, and just a couple hits, and he is down. That was a flawless Collector fight. Again, I could not believe what I was seeing right now. So anyone that have been sleeping on this weapon, I would urge you to do the same as I have. Definitely give this a second try, because it is worth it. Do I think it's like an S tier item? I don't think so. I'm willing to move it up to like a B tier. I think it still has some issues. So anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed this little return to the channel. I'll definitely be trying to upload more regularly from now on. And thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next one.